Yeah, after seven years of watching games like that, it's a, I guess we might as well have that one be exciting, and it was. I told Servant before the game today, it felt like I'm 50. I'm back being 67 against Steve on that one. Was there any thoughts to go to Blevins that that Blevins last hit? He was not available tonight, Zach. Oh, he wasn't? Okay. Blevins wasn't available. We wanted to say Blevins has gone like six out of the last seven. Okay. Uh, he was going to be off tonight, and I, I knew if we used Daddy, I wanted to save uh, Seawald for tomorrow uh, if we needed him. So those guys weren't, weren't, weren't available tonight. You know, he, he's closed before, um, but he, you know, it's been a little bit. Just your thoughts on. He's shaky early when he I came in there. Yeah, and then he finds I'll, a I'll way. I'll tell you, Zach, and one of the things you hate to do, and that is bring your closer in with guys on base. You hate it. They like to start clean innings. They like to go about uh, approaching the hitters as they, as they want. And a lot of times when you bring them with guys on base, it just changes their whole game plan. So uh, they hate to do it, but tonight, you know, that was what we had to, had to face. I tell you, I, I thought Ramirez actually threw the ball pretty good. I mean, outside of the walk, you know, a little bloop single to the left and uh, ball off uh, uh, TJ's glove. Uh, I like his arm, and I just thought it was appropriate to try to get a game to get him in there. But uh, uh, we were we were short, and that's why we kind of we weren't real short. But we I thought we it was a good spot for him. So you knew, you knew this milestone was coming, huh? did, but did you get any text from anybody or anybody in the organization say anything that really stood out to you in the last day or two? No, I, I don't think so. I, I, just the congratulations is enough. Um, I mean, you know, David, this afternoon's, you know, said try to make it through the whole game with today, tonight, and uh, he just said, hey, look, you know, it's been a really, it's really been fun to have you here, and, and you, you deserve this. And I thought, probably when it comes from the players, that means a lot. Dave, Terry, how did uh, how did Wheeler lose it so fast? He got out of a couple of jams in that inning. It just seemed like it just gone. The command. You know, David, I wish I had the answer to that. We, you know, that's kind of been uh, the motif here in this last two weeks, where guys are sailing along, and all of a sudden it just goes. And, and I don't have an answer for you. I, again, I know uh, I know Dan and Ricky will, will take a look at the tape tomorrow, the video, and, and and see what they see as far as the delivery goes. But uh, you know, long inning, maybe I, I don't know, but certainly I tell you, he's. Again, I, I thought he was really throwing the ball well early in the game, and I said, "Boy, this kid continues to make huge strides." And hopefully, we continue. Zach, sorry, you know, I know you, you guys do give up three runs. The game is on edge, but considering the bullpens get blown some games, was it is it a big mental boost that you guys did get through that ninth inning? I think it is. I really do. I, I think it's a huge boost for us to to know. Hey, look, you know, each guy. I'll tell you, Zach. You know, you you think about it, we got some extra runs in the, you know, in the eighth inning. But the job that Robert Casselman did, you know, that that that's got to be noticed. This guy came in, he pitched two clean innings, very very impressive the way through the ball. And so yeah, I think hopefully it's a mental boost for our bullpen. That hey, look, you know, we, maybe the bad times are gone. Maybe it's time for us to catch some breaks. Rich, when you started the season, you had Jose in that leadoff spot, and tonight's a game where. He's benefiting from a guy on base. Can you talk about the two of them? And I think they were on six or seven times on base in the game, Terry. Yeah, seven times, I think, or, or more, if not more, but it may be eight times a piece. So uh, between them, that that means that's that's the difference in how you score. You know, when you get those guys at the top of the order on base, where the guys in the middle lineup, you don't even have, they don't need hits. You know, they just need productive outs because those guys, you know, they ran the bases great and. I tell you, ever since I put Jose in the two hole, he's gotten, and that, that young man leading off has really been impressive in that slot. So uh, I'm happy for Jose, tremendous career, and uh, great that he got his 2,000th hit in this part. Go ahead, Nanny. Um, Terry, uh, you mentioned Gazoman. You obviously, at some point, you're going to have some other options also in the rotation. Is he giving you an idea that he might? Have some value if you decided to go that way. Yes, and putting him in there. He really has. And again, you saw it again tonight. It's the same thing I talk about. Seawall pitches ahead in the count. It's like it was, you know, outside of the first hit, he was strike one and everybody. And that's, you know, I mean, that's impressive. And I, I, 
you cannot make up for that. They, you know, you get ahead of hitters, and you know now they 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 change their approach, they change their swings, and uh, I thought Robert did a great job. And and on, and on Reyes, obviously the start of the year things were really bad for him. Did you feel like he he was going to be able to get it back? You know, when you look at guys like Jose, like Grandy, uh, any, you know, those guys who have legitimate track records, you, you know, and they, and they get off to a slow start, you just, you always say in your mind, they're going to come out of it. They just, you know, I mean, it's, it's just, ha they're just going to get out of it. When? You hope it's sooner, more sooner than later, but a lot of times you just have to be patient with them and continue to run them out there. And um, as I've said so many times, Make no mistake, they're hum they're human beings too, and they're not they're not happy with what's going on. They're not just saying, "Well, well I'll get it going." They they worked at it. Both Jose and, and and Grandy both are working very very hard to get their swings down, and and it's paying off. In that same vein, with with Curtis, another tough night. Is he running out of chances here to, to get it going? And at what point do you decide to move him down in the order? I've moved him down a couple of times. <laughs> you know, well, you got we got in in this particular situation. You know, you got Lucas, Lucas, who, I mean, he's come up here and he got a, he got a, a big double tonight. But you know, he only had 12 at bat, minor league at bats before he got here. And so, I hit him fifth the other day, and I thought that was way too much, too early to get him up there. So I just flipped him back. And uh, you know, last night he had a big double. A couple of days ago, he had a big homer and he had a pinch hit double in Arizona. So, uh, you know, you're allowed to have a bad night, but you know, hopefully, you know, tomorrow's a better day for him. Go ahead, Matt. Terry, you've been uh, kind of this week, you were reluctant to kind of talk about this milestone. You didn't say you don't like celebrating, but now that it's here, you got it through, you got to win. You can, I mean, what does does this kind of moment mean to you now that? Well, it, I'm going to tell you, Matt, you know, to do this job, to have this job is a tremendous privilege. And it, it's extremely humbling. I mean, there's only 30 of these jobs. And there's a lot of guys, in my opinion, who are very, very qualified. And to be in one spot for seven years is you know, it, it's, it's a tremendous experience. It's, I mean, it's, it's, un, it's unbelievable to think that I've been here that long. Uh, I look across the field, I look at Mike Socia, I mean, he replaced me in Anaheim, and he's still there. Uh, you just don't see that very often anymore as a manager in, in baseball to where you're in one place for a long time. And so it's, uh, to me, it's a humbling experience, and it's been a tremendous honor and uh, exciting. It's, I've told so many people, Fan, the fans in New York City energize you every day. And that's why when I get up in the morning, I know I'm going to face some type of issue when I get to the ballpark. But it makes you, makes you have extra energy. It keeps you alert. Um, and, you know, when you get to be my age, you've you got to worry about staying alert, you know. So, so uh, it's, 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 been, it's been a great experience. Okay. Last one, back left. Hi, Terry. Just what was going through your mind in the ninth inning there when Trout steps up with the bases loaded? When Trout went up with the bases loaded? Yeah. Uh, I, my, the first thought is I, I'd almost rather walk this guy than give him a pitch to hit. And, you know, at, fortunately, Addy made some good pitches on him. But uh, those, that's the kind of situation you, where you look back at the time, you know, when Buck Showalter walked Bonds with the bases loaded rather than the pitch to him. And I had pretty much the same feeling. I might want to walk this guy, pitch around this guy as it was, was give him a chance to hit. But fortunately, Addy made some good pitches. Oh, absolutely. 